Hi guys, we actually now are live. I want to thank you for watching uh, Conversations with Dr. Allen. As now I'm going to try to tell you ways to talk to you about my personal COVID experience. We'll have several talks regarding COVID, how to manage it, um, what to expect from it, um, and how to make sure that at some point if you do develop it, how you have it, if you develop immunity or not. Now my talk today, I'm gonna keep brief, but I'm gonna stay strictly with how the virus affected me. So therefore you can use my history or my comparison to help you decide. The first thing is I was in complete denial that I had the coronavirus. In this office, I was with a face shield, I was with the N95, the blue surgical mask, we have the gloves, the gowns, and the booties. I honestly was very protected in my office. I thought I had the flu. My children and I were swimming in the uh, swimming pool. We got out one day, we both had what we call the riders, the body shakes and a little illness associated with it. That night we took some Tylenol, we went to bed after watching a movie, the next day it was gone. About two days later, it rained. I don't know if you remember when it rained in Los Angeles. And I developed the same symptoms again. The shakes and the fever. I felt somewhat weak, but again, I did not, I repeat, I did not believe I had the coronavirus or COVID-19. I honestly thought I had some of the flu. So the first false is thinking you don't have it that it has to be something else. I just got a nasal congestion or I blame something else. Now, as a physician, as a person that's been dealing with this virus since the beginning, I was in denial. There's no way I could have had uh, COVID because I honestly thought in the environment where COVID lives, which is in this office, I thought I was protected. It had to be something completely different. So what did I do? I continued to take my Tylenol continue to interact with my family. Now, once it got to the point I had the shakes, in order to protect the people that comes into my office and to protect my staff, I decided I needed to get tested so I wouldn't be in this office spreading the virus and or infecting my staff. So I came up on the 1st of September to get tested. Now, because of my denial, my three kids, got infected, whether they say it was the rapid form or the old form, I don't know. But my three kids got infected, the nanny got infected, the housekeeper got infected, and two of my employees came down sick. So please, any respiratory symptoms, the first thing I'm gonna teach you, get tested. No matter what's going on, get tested. Now, my flight started on January the 1st. January the 1st. Happy New Year, Dr. Allen. I tested positive for the COVID virus on January the 1st. Now, at this particular point, please keep in mind that I honestly believe that this could have been a flu. One is because I just didn't want to accept I had COVID virus. The next day, I tested my children, if you watch any of the videos, all three of my kids had the virus. And at this point, I was pretty ill. Saturations was low, and fever was about 102, 103. Seven days after, seven days after, which is on the eighth, seven days after I tested positive, I developed immunity. So if you watched our show, we were very happy now that I had developed immunity. Now, immunity is defined as following. The SARS antigen, which is COVID, my body had developed antibodies specifically for COVID-2. And my body had developed antibody combo, an antibody combo, which is multiple antibodies for coronavirus. These are IgM, IgA, IgG. It's called a combo, like a Big Mac, fries, and a shake. A combo antibodies specifically against 
COVID or SARS-CoV-2. And it's not for any other viruses. It was specifically for that virus. That's what immunity looks like. Seven days after getting the virus and testing positive, I've been blessed with natural immunity. Seven, again, I repeat, seven days after uh, testing positive, I developed natural immunity. Now, once that happened, these antibodies develops. Now, I want to talk to you about antibodies. The antibodies are nothing more than immunoglobulins, which means like police officers. They're a protective protein, protein produced by my natural immune system in response to the presence of a foreign substance. In this particular case, it was COVID. COVID would be the bad guy, or they call it antigen, and the police, which was the, the combo group of antibodies I, my body had produced against COVID. And a clear example of how it works is these guys would be considered my uh, um, uh, combo antibodies. What happens is they, they almost here, they've got two arms, they latch, or if you want to put, say, put, put COVID, which this would have been COVID, in handcuffs and hold on to it why my body get rid of this actual infection. Thus the term antibody, thus showing you my body now was fighting back, which is what we know as I have immunity. COVID walks in, my body knows who you are, irrespective to the old strand, the new strand, the wannabe strand. If you step into my body now with lipstick and a wig, my body will recognize you as the aggressive form or the regular form because now I have immunity to protect me. Now keep in mind, within seven days of, of contacting the disease, I had natural God-given immunity. And following that, which is um, this now is as of yesterday, which is 10 days. I then tested negative for the actual infectious state of the disease. I tested negative again, 10 days after contracting the virus, seven days, I developed immunity, 10 days it was out of my system. And I had the antibodies now to protect me. Now, they're not telling us how long immunity lasts. So if you say, Doc, are you good to rest of your life? I can't answer that. But I do know if you stick with me, I will be testing, trying to give us some information that we're not getting from just reading and listening to others, from being an actual patient this time and subject of what's going on with this virus. Now, remember, I had developed immunity within seven days and the virus was out of my system within 10 days. Now, how did COVID hit me? What did I feel and how did I know or, or what should you expect when this virus attacks you? The first thing COVID did was went straight for my sinuses. Straight for my sinuses. Now, this is a, a cut, like I cut you through the top of your head, but here are your sinuses. It went straight for my sinuses. What it did, and the people have talked to you about having congestion and loss of appetite. That's what most people are trying to tell you. My personal experience, it gave me this horrible sinus headache. Horrible sinus headache. I felt like my head was going to explode. At no point did I develop the normal. Now, what is the normal when you get a sinus infection? At no point did I come down with any type of sore throat. At no point did I come down with where I'm starting to lose my voice. And I can't, or my ears are stuffy. So the stuffy ears, the loss of the voice as it comes back to the back of your throat, you get hoarse, 
and then you get burning in your chest. That does not happen or was not my COVID experience. It went straight to my head and the next thing I knew, my chest was bothering me. It was difficult to take a deep breath. Now I'm not sure if that's the 99% for everyone, but COVID in my explanation tried to choke me out. It went to the sinus, bypassed all of this sore throat, runny nose, and went straight to my chest, was causing difficulty breathing. Now, hypoxemia here. Once COVID hit my lungs, it made it difficult for me to then have enough oxygen to supply my body. So now my saturations dropped. This machine is called a saturation monitor. It's about $25 on Amazon. My saturation dropped. Now, normal saturation should be somewhere around 95 to 100. My saturation was 88 to 92. At this particular point, I was struggling for oxygen. I was hypoxemic. COVID stopped, somehow stopped me from actually being able to inhale enough oxygen. Now, when this happened and hypoxemia develops, your body goes into what's called lactic acidosis. Lactic acidosis. In lactic acidosis, this is when you start having nausea, vomiting, and this abnormal breathing. People say, I can't seem to catch my breath, and I have, I'm just weak. Now keep in mind, those symptoms are symptoms of lactic acidosis. It is not COVID doing it to you. It's your body's natural response to what's happening to it. It goes into this ability to survive on its own, just as if you had ran a marathon or you've been playing football all day. You went in a lactic acidosis, which is an acidotic state, not COVID, or which your body now is giving this weird breathing and these unexplained cramps, arthritis type cramp, muscle spasms, and you're very weak. Remember, that's your body's response. It's not COVID that goes and you have this idea that it started messing with my bones and doing something with my muscle. No, that was the lactic acidosis that triggered that response in my body. Now, mind you, I was very weak, cramping, spasms, and bedridden for about three to four, five days. Vomiting, which leads to dehydration. My saturations was low. And we talked about hypoxemia of which now you have low fluid, which is dehydration, low oxygen. Thus, the reason they come in with these ventilators to force your lungs to open so you can get oxygen. That's why they put people on a ventilator. I had low oxygen saturation. I was dehydrated from all that vomiting and diarrhea. Thus, why people end up in the hospital emergency room because they can't keep in the fluids, and they can't breathe. COVID tried to literally choke me out. Now, in order to be a good soldier, I had two choices. One is say, God, and I truly believe in God, why am I struggling and how can I be of a benefit to somebody else? The first thing we do in struggling is think of ourselves, normal procedure. So I then had access to buying what we know of as the Donald Trump drug. Regeneron is the synthetic or an experimental drug by giving in the first 10 days Regeneron. Now I know that because I didn't know. All I know, all I knew was they gave Donald Trump something when he got sick and he got better. Regeneron is. Sorry.
teaching and falling, <laughs> I get excited when I'm trying to teach and, and tell you something. Regeneron, we'll come back to it. Regeneron is the actual IV medication. Now, let's be honest. Um, you won't have access to getting this drug. And for me to be a real good teacher and a real good soldier, how would I be able to help you if I ordered the medicine, which I had access to, and then had someone come to my house, which is one of my nurse practitioners or doctors, and give it to me IV? So Regeneron is the name of that drug. Given early, it's supposed to stop the virus. Why am I talking? You specifically may not need that. I'm here to tell you, stop living in fear that you can defeat this. It's just, I'm gonna give you several talks and lectures to help you understand how to fight the COVID virus by giving you my personal COVID experience. Now, please don't just allow me to help you. Try to share the videos with as many people as you can. I've come, I've come up with this term called SOS. Save ourselves. Let me repeat that to you again. SOS. Save ourselves. By telling each other how and what to do when you contract a virus, it is so prevalent out there that you don't know where you're going to get it. And me, of all people, contracted it, and I didn't know where I got it from. It's so easy to say it's not it, and me, of all people, who've been dealing with this ever saw, I did not have it. But I'm also here to say that you can defeat this virus. Your body will have natural immunity. And if you don't have time for those individuals that want to get the vaccine and you contract the virus, these next couple of talks are gonna help us all be able to be ready for this, not live in fear, and immediately go in seven days to the same immunity that God gave me, and in 10 days have that stuff out of your system. Now I don't qualify for a vaccine. I don't know how long the immunity lasts, but within three to four months, I'm immune. That's what the vaccine's supposed to do. You can't give me something when I already have immunity, of which I'm not just talking, of which you get two shots and you're immune. Who draws the blood and tell you you're immune? Or you just take the two shots and listen to what Pfizer these guys are telling us. It's okay. I'm not saying that we're against the vaccine. I'm just saying that those individuals who contract the vaccine, it's very important that they at least have the opportunity to listen to what I'm gonna be telling you the next couple of days and to help you get through it just like I went through it. I'm a better teacher now because I've personally experienced it. So I'm asking you to share this with as many people as possible because I did not know a lot of the things that I'm gonna personally be telling you. I'm now gonna show you some of the horrific experiences that I actually went through. Um, they're kind of challenging but I still want you to see what I went through. Now, everyone may not experience the same, but what I went through the nights of my extremely ill time while I was dealing with the COVID virus. I recorded some of the actual uh, events just so I can be able to let you see some of the feverish episodes or some of the experiences that I went through. Please keep in, t in mind that these are my experiences and I'm only trying to share it with you so it doesn't shock you when you develop it or when you do catch it. You cannot run from it. Eventually you're gonna have it. But when you do have or see someone with it, you'll know exactly what to expect and what to do. I got a 
fever now, because I know when I, uh, when I, uh, uh, mm. when I, uh, let me turn this thing on. Mm. Let me just tell me some other one. Let me get rid of that. Check my temperature. Mm. 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 One oh one. You know, the reason I bring this up. Mm. These fever dreams. <clears throat> I kind of every night, and they're coming. <coughs> These dreams are coming. These thoughts. <clears throat> These fever dreams. Volume B. Are you coming to my head? Uh, uh, I'm trying to see what I can remember. Uh, but the Sanchez family. Uh, uh, mm. Martinez family. Uh, anybody name Jose. These are the people that have passed away. Mm. And all I keep. <laughs> <laughs> And all I keep hearing or seeing is these nights that my fever gets high and these names come up. Uh, Mark. There's so bad Oh, my God. Mark, uh, I'm trying to get these dreams out of my head. These dreams, these <laughs> people, you keep getting, <laughs> getting these names of folks coming, trying to say that they, they, they love people. And I have a fever, it's 102. So, yeah, I went out to turn it on. I went out to turn it on. <laughs> uh, Susie. Uh, uh, Leroy. Uh, uh, oh God, uh, Stephanie, uh, Phil, uh, <coughs> I'm not seriously knowing these people, I'm not trying to say that this is some real stuff, I'm just saying that this is what I go through, or what, what's been happening with me over here with these fevers, all these, what well, <coughs> names of things, I just blame it on the fever if this stuff don't make any sense. But there, there's <laughs> people out there, boss. These people are trying to say they love you, whoever they are, and whoever you are. <clears throat> and these night, I get a bunch of dreams of the same stuff, but different names. Uh, I figured I'd get up tonight and say something, or do something. I'm gonna look horrible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want some? Um... Mm -hmm. Nah, I just need some, probably some tea. Thanks for coming down, okay? Let me let this go. <coughs>
existence. I decided to let you know what I went through. I'm also deciding to let you know that we're not going to be living in fear, that we can develop some immunity, and we can fight this. I know there's some people out there that are going to be reluctant to take the vaccine, or by the time the vaccine gets to you, you're going to be afraid, and they also know you're going to be getting multiple vaccines in the future. So this is actually where these talks aren't to say anything against the vaccine. But it's all, these lectures are specifically to say, if I get COVID, I'll survive. I'm going to tell you things that I went through and what I experienced to help you survive. And so you're not living in fear. You still got to wear your mask. You still got to do your safe distances. But at least you're not afraid if you do contract the virus. In these next couple of lectures, I'm going to have a lot to say, do, and at the end give you to help you do what God bless me to do. Beat the, divide, beat the virus. Come back with some immunity to last for however long it was meant to be. And stand tall and help another person. SOS. Save ourselves. Thanks for watching. Conversations with Dr. Allen.